We get sent your fail videos all the time and some of those crashes are absolutely unbelievable. Of course, some of them are complete accidents and unavoidable, but some can be avoided. And in this video, I'm gonna try and show you how. First video comes from Charles, who's riding his pivot at UCSD Trails in Santa Cruz. So check this out. Charles says he was practicing jumps and took one of the biggest I've done. I was too focused on clearing it that I didn't pick the best line. I realized I was headed to the tree, but after landing, my suspension was completely compressed and I just couldn't turn my bike. Could have been worse though, bike and body were completely unscathed. So in the video, you can hear, just before it goes slow-mo, you can hear a bit of a crunch. So I wonder if that was just a bit of a heavy gear change or maybe your gear's jumping around a little bit. And then it goes slow-mo and it almost looks like your chain jams because your feet don't go level, but you don't say anything about that. So I presume that doesn't happen. So I think actually the real cause of this going wrong on the jump is taking off without feet level. So I would always try and have cranks level so you get a nice uh, takeoff with your weight central over both pedals. If you do it or if you pedal too close to a jump and one pedal is lower than the other, it's really easy to become unbalanced, take off, and that's when your weight kind of twists a little bit. I think that's the cause of going a bit sideways in the air, and then when you land, you can't straighten it out. So really it's about trying to pedal and then stop as soon as you can so you're set up for a jump. I've got a good example here. I'll try and show you how to do it. You have to go quite fast to clear this jump, and you are pedaling around this berm. So just check how I do it. The next video comes from Raphael riding in Cagayan de Oro. <laughs> Raphael says, I cleaned a part of our old trail and then shit happened. So yeah, you can see you're dropping into what looks like a really steep section. Your body position looks good, but then all hell breaks loose. But actually, if you look closely at the video, in the bottom of the screen, you can see there's something lying across the trail. Can't quite tell what it is. Could be a root or a pipe or a bit of rock, but it's lying at that horrible sort of diagonally down across the trail. And I'm sure everyone's hit something like that. They pretty much just wipe your front wheel out. That's the slickest thing I've ever tried to ride across. And that's what happens here. Front wheel goes, super steep, front wheel goes uh, out of control, lands in this big hole, and then that's the end of it, basically. You start rolling down the hill. So situations like that, it's really important that you sort of take that thing out of the equation. Uh, even riding on flat, if you hit something that's slippy and it's diagonally going across the trail, it's pretty much always gonna wipe you out. So this is where you really need to sort of think about either bunny hopping over that thing, which can be really steep in steep, six, uh, steep sections, because if you bunny hop, you're gonna drop a long way, and also you've got to set up for it, and you're on the brakes. So sometimes it's a case of just unweighting the bike, and uh, maybe just front wheel, then back wheel. But it's really, you know, you've got to take that thing out of the equation, because if you hit that, this is probably gonna happen every time. Uh, what is really difficult about this is you've probably got to try and do all that whilst not looking at it, because you've really got to see what's coming next because it's the thing that happens after that slippy thing that's gonna cause you the pain. So do all that whilst you're seeing it in your peripheral vision down here, but looking where you need to be on that trail. If you're a bit dubious about practicing that into a steep section, then do it on the flat. One wheel at a time, and then the proper bunny hop. The next crasher is Danny riding his Trek Marlin 5 in Cambridge, Wisconsin. Danny himself says, uh, not much to see here, but the sound of me getting the bars into my gut is great. Uh, yes, I've been there, done that. Uh, I think this is all about timing. Uh, Danny, I'm pretty sure you know what happened here, but it looks to me like there's that tree on the right-hand side, probably got the bottom part of it, like a root sticking out, and you've slammed your pedal into it. I've definitely been guilty of this. I've actually separated my shoulder in this, uh, following Steve Pete, riding along. Tried to pedal in place I shouldn't have been, smashed the pedal in, straight over the bars, unexpectedly, and straight onto the shoulder. 
So in this situation, um, I mean, you've probably learned your lesson, of course, but I would say when you're riding through sections, this is quite a good one, actually, where there's lots of obstacles on the ground, you're never going to see every single one because there's hundreds of them. I actually try and change uh, down a gear so I'm pushing a slower cadence so actually my feet don't get as close to the ground as often and try and keep an eye out for things in the corner of your eye like if there's a tree there probably is going to be a root next to it or even sometimes there's a like sniper stumps in bits of undergrowth so just try and play it safe try and be slow with the pedal strokes and stop pedaling if you think you really need to. Another factor that could have contributed to this crash is you can see in slow motion, just as you hit that root, your thumb has come off the bar to hit the shifter, so you don't have a great grip, the thumb is over the bar, so when you slam into that root, probably your hand comes off the bar and then you're going over. Could you have saved it if you weren't trying to shift? Maybe, but probably not in this situation. But I've definitely been in that case where if you've got a good grip and you hit something, you can sort of bench press your way out of it, not always, sometimes you go over anyway, but if your hand comes off the bar, it's game over. Last but definitely not least, Landon riding his GT Aggressor Pro on a backyard trail in Utah. Ooh, I think we've probably, well, many of us have probably done this in the early days of riding bikes. And I've definitely have done this, gone over the bars on a drop off. Uh, what you can see here is there's a bit of an upslope coming to the drop. So you're going to lose a lot of speed there, which is going to make it harder. Uh, but the real problem is the manual that if you actually pause it when you're moving back to lift the front wheel You're quite high above the saddle and compare that to how far you can get back on the bike uh, You can see really the difference in where your hips are So it's really a case of trying to get further back practice on your manual So your hips are sort of above your rear axle so that if you get the speed or the timing wrong You're still right to the back of the bike. You're not high up above the saddle because in this situation the front wheel drops, you're above the saddle, there's pretty much only one way this is gonna go and it's over the bars. So this is really a perfect example of why you should get back and not up. Uh, one thing to remember is also trying to keep your head up. It sounds simple, but actually can make a big difference to your body weight and where it is on the bike. Just by keeping your head up, it sort of opens your chest up, brings your weight behind the bike. Uh, probably not enough to save you in this case, but sometimes it will. Well, hopefully there's some tips there that's going to help at least a few of you stop crashing because some of those are really common ones I used to see a lot when I was coaching. Uh, if you like this video and you think I should carry on with this little series, I can definitely do more. You guys send us thousands of fail videos so I can pick them out dead easily and try and help you guys out. So let us know in the comments if you think I should do that. If you want to see a previous video we've done about how to stop going over the bars over there for that one. If you want to watch me have a massive crash, click down there for the Andy Specifico video. Thumbs up if you don't like crashing and subscribe.